Our next speaker is Dr. Valentina Lozano. She's a glaucoma specialist at Markman Wollston Medical Group, and she is going to talk about healthy habits for glaucoma patients. So come on up, Valentina. Hi, everyone. Let's talk about healthy habits for glaucoma patients. I'm Dr. Valentina Lozano, and I'm a glaucoma and cataract surgeon at, in Los Angeles, California. Okay, so we as glaucoma surgeons are very used to hear these questions from our glaucoma patients. Like, hey doc, are there any vitamins or supplements I can take to prevent glaucoma? What kind of exercises can I perform? Can stress affect my glaucoma? Does marijuana help with my glaucoma? And I'm sure you as patients have been feeling a little bit frustrated for getting these very short, vague answers like, eat healthy, exercise regularly, relax, and yes and no answers. But what does it mean? Like when you say eat healthy, what do you mean? What do you mean exercise regularly? Like why is it so difficult to get an answer? And the thing is that it's very hard. We as surgeons practice something called evidence-based medicine where basically we give you recommendations with data that has been backed up for many studies. But here there's very limited research studies, so it's very difficult for us to give solid recommendations on this based on the studies that we have. And to make things even more complicated, we still don't understand what glaucoma is. Glaucoma is not just one eye condition, but a group of eye conditions that damage the optic nerve. So on one side, we have glaucoma patients where they have increased intraocular pressure. But then on the other side, we have patients where the, norm, it's, the eye pressure is normal, but there's something going on with the blood flow going into the optic nerve. So it's really a balance between intraocular pressure and blood flow to the optic nerve. And I would like to share with you some of the studies that we've had. I really like the way Dr. Nancy Lin, who's a PhD in nutrition, separated these healthy habits into five pillars. So it's physical, nutritional, environmental, mental, emotional, and spiritual. So let's just go over one of on one uh, separately. So let's do the physical. For physical, I really want you to remember these three key factors. Head above your heart, avoid Valsalva maneuvers, which I'll explain, and then aerobic exercise is good. For the head above your heart, I want to show you this graph, which basically this is how our pressures in the eye fluctuate throughout the day. So this is a study of healthy individuals where if you see here in business hours, when we see you in clinic from 8 to 5 p.m., the intraocular pressure doesn't go higher than 20. But when they go to bed, they go to sleep, this pressure goes above 20, up to like the mid-20s. So why does that happen? Well, it's because our head is not above our heart. So gravity is not on our advantage, and that's why the pressure in the eye goes up when we go to bed. That's why in glaucoma patients, we do not recommend any type of exercises where the head is below the heart, such as downward dog positions in yoga or headstands. I had a patient with severe glaucoma who told me he did headstands. I asked him if he could do it in clinic so we can check his pressure. And it went from 15 to 33. So you can see how big it is. So in this case, if you have really advanced glaucoma, and you're progressing, it would be ideal that you don't sleep flat, that you keep the head of the bed elevated, whether it's with two pillows or just having one of those beds where you can raise the head up. Now for Valsalva maneuvers, so Valsalva is just any activities where you're exhaling with your mouth closed and your face turns red like in these people. So things that we would avoid, uh, when you have glaucoma, you don't want to have that Valsalva maneuver breath phase because that will increase your intraocular pressure. So lifting very heavy weights, not recommended. Playing wind instruments such as the saxophone or the didgeridoo, not recommended. Being constipating, like constantly straining, straining, not recommended. And then beware of scuba diving and bungee jumping where your head is below your heart. For physical aerobic exercise, good. So any type of cardio that you hear, whether it's jogging, biking, um, playing tennis, playing pokeball, all of that is really good. And not only for your glaucoma, but actually for your general health. Now for nutrition, 
let's go over the things that you can eat and like not do this. So I, I'm gonna give you three examples of what to eat and examples of try to avoid. The most important one here is flavonoids. Flavonoids is a plant chemical that it's fine in all fruits and veggies, especially in the red purple ones, like berries, red onions, radishes, also legumes, lentils, chickpeas, also in caffeinated teas and dark chocolate. So flavonoids have been shown to prevent the progression of glaucoma and also increases the blood flow to the optic nerve. The other one is nitric oxide. Uh, this Earlier this morning, Dr. Richardson just mentioned that nitric oxide is one of the new glaucoma medications. So this one works by increasing the outflow, decreasing the resistance to outflow. And these we can find it in dark leafy greens, spinach, kale, celery, beets, citrus, eggplant, and dark chocolate. And the other one is omega-3, especially DHA and EPA. And this one you can find in fish and seafood. So wild-caught salmon, tuna, sardines, oysters. If you're vegan, sea algae will be a great option, and also walnuts. And then very briefly, not this. This is not only for glaucoma again, but also for your general health. They've been known to increase, um, like, sorry, decrease the blood flow, increase plaque on your arteries. So not recommended, saturated fast transaturated fats, complex carbohydrates. So everything that goes with fat cats, fat cats of red meats, dairy products, processed meats, anything that you find in the packaged food or fried food, frozen pizzas, french fries, potatoes, bread, rice, pasta. So I hate to say never do this, of course, we only have one good life, only one life, but try to eat more on the left side and less on the right side. So what is a good example? So for breakfast, a good example would be having um, a bowl of fruit, so red or purple, blackberries, raspberries, blueberries. Um, if you're into omelets, put yeah, all of your dark green leafy veggies, like spinach, kale. You can also do smoothies, so put your favorite fruit and then you can just put in there all those greens that you don't like so that you feel the flavor. And then if you're into hot beverages, caffeinated teas, um, a big question here has been coffee. So coffee has some controversial findings. It's been shown to raise the pressure at short term, but it also has benefits of increasing the blood flow. So I guess everything in my conversation here would do everything in moderation. If you take one coffee a day, you will probably be okay. But if you have severe glaucoma and you're drinking five to seven cups of coffee, that might not be a good idea. For lunch, um, if, you're pro if, you're, if you like the protein, then a good option would be the seafood, so a nice salmon with steamed veggies, and then you can always substitute the rice to cauliflower rice. And then for dinner, a nice bowl of legumes. This is a bowl of lentils. You can do chickpea beans, and of course, always your dark green leafy veggies, a nice bowl of salad. If you're into snacks, you can do nuts, walnuts, cashews, pistachios, and if you have a sweet tooth like I do, um, dark chocolate would be a great option here. Okay, so what about environmental? Environmental is everything outside that can affect us. Smoking, smoking is a big issue here. Cigarettes, cigars, they contain nicotine, which is associated with elevated intraocular pressures. Vaping and chewing tobacco has the same effect. Unfortunately, even if you're not smoking and someone close to you is smoking, you might get the same side effects. So it's, it's very bad. And even if you're vaping, chewing, smoking has an additive problem. All the smoke causes irritation, dry eye. I'm sure you're already taking glaucoma drops and you have these issues, but all that smoke will cause even more problems. And now the question of the year, I'm sure everyone, all doctors here, okay, what about marijuana? And I think this is my number one question. Um, at all times. Uh, marijuana recent studies have shown to decrease the pressure in the eye. However, it's short term. So in order to get that sustained effect, you will have to be on a constant high. So of course, you will be impaired of driving, working. So we do not recommend this yet. Of course, a lot of data has been happening because it's a very important topic, but we do not recommend that as of this point. I hear some boos over there. <laughs> oh, very important. If you smoke marijuana, don't smoke two hours, two, three hours before your appointment because that's just going to give us an artificially low pressure. 
Okay. All right. So lead, lead, long-term exposure may be a risk factor. So if you're any on the industry in paints, toys, furniture, jewelry, cosmetics, foods, plumbing materials, you could get a blood test to make sure that you're not exposed to lead. And then lastly, um, mental, emotional. I think this is a very big one because really studies are not quite good. But a lot of patients ask me like, hey, I'm stressed. Does this, this affect my glaucoma? I'm anxious. Is my glaucoma getting worse? You know, and the short answer is yes. Stress and anxiety can increase in heart rate and intraocular pressure. The stress hormone called cortisol has been known to increase intraocular pressure. So of course, as I said, we practice evidence-based medicine. They've been shown that yoga, breathing exercise, and meditation increase blood flow and decrease intraocular pressure. I'm sure most of you maybe don't do yoga, don't know how to meditate. So I always say whatever brings you into your Zen mode, like whether it's walking to the beach, going camping with your family, everything that you feel that brings your stress level low, then do that and do that even more because it can help with your glaucoma. So in summary, glaucoma patients can live a normal life. Key to the healthy habits is Everything in moderation, okay? I'm not here to say no, 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 but just you can have something, but in moderation. And of course, very important, keep working together with your glaucoma specialist. As we like to call glaucoma, it's a silent thief of sight. So maybe you don't know things that we can't see in clinic. Thank you very much. I do have a website, drvalentinalosano.com. Um, if you have any questions, there's a contact information. And if you're in the area, I'll be happy to see you in Torrance, California. Thanks.